Copenhagen Game Collective is uh, is kind of like a, um, kind of, you could say like a collective of artists and game developers in Copenhagen, but it's you know it didn't just kind of get formed because someone just stood up and said like we're gonna do a collective. So it was like a process of multiple things happening, and I would like to tell you a little bit about the history because I'm really hoping that uh, any kind of city or area should have like this uh, naturally formed collectives because it's way more fun. Uh, you know, when it's not really an institution, but it's actually like ideas and people that create the, the collective. So um, I'm uh, gonna start with like, yeah, so it is Copenhagen Game Collective. The name came a bit later than actually the whole idea. And uh, the reason why it got the name Copenhagen Game Collective is because it was, it had like a very local focus because it was very much about the people you work with, the people you meet or you talk to and they're like near you, like physically close to you, kind of like, and not just like the internet. <laughs> so um, so there, there was like this kind of a conscious feeling that, uh, that like, oh, what makes this, this thing, uh, like this collective cool is the fact that we're all ba like based in the same place. Um, so how uh, or it started with actually, of course, not kind of the idea of a collective, but it started by a bunch of people making making like games. Uh, so uh, 2008, I think I could kind of say that it's like an official start of the whole idea because there were a bunch of people, including myself, um, working on a Darkroom Sex Game, which is like a game jam game uh, at Nordic Game Jam 2008. And it was not, uh, again, like it was just a little experiment that a bunch of game designers, you know, put together and wanted to make a game without graphics, but like with a sexual team, like a very, very intimidating kind of sexual team. So um, it's it's kind of I will I would like to show you like I have two videos to show you, which is from the very early games, just to give you an idea of what uh, how like what kind of what type of a play like inspired the whole collective because I think it has. The history of how it started, it really influences uh, where the direction of today and what these people have in common, what they're interested in, and what they're actually like embracing. So um, I don't know, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, but if you haven't, then I guess you can enjoy it now. <laughs> and uh, so sound, I don't have sound. Yeah, I forgot about that. And I think I will have the first here. Do you have some? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. It was meant to make something provocative, but then uh, you know, game designers' mind after like this was done and became like really interesting uh, game project that people were interested in, and you know, festivals invited to come and show it or like indicate like 
what we won like some prizes at the indicator i remember and then you start thinking like oh my god what did, was it about this project that was really interesting and that's what where this whole process started of like, oh, but there's no graphics, and there's a lot of like about the physical interaction, and like embarrassment, because you're kind of embarrassed looking at this other person, but you have to look at the other person while this thing sounds in the background, because it's a rhythm game, you know, you have to be in a perfect rhythm to like win, or get an orgasm, or whatever. So the thing is that, uh, you know, it's, it's, there was this, as I say, like a bunch of people that started being like really interested, like let's do something more of this, you know? Let's do like way more of this. So it, uh, it's just kind of, it was a, like, a, like a snowball, you know? It like just started like a bunch of uh, different experiments came, come, came out. But it was like very much like um, where like you don't use a lot of the screen or even if you use the screen, it's very physical. So the next kind of like historical project that was also very successful is Button. That was a purely, this is like a very good example that it was, um, it, it, the, the collective was here forming, it actually kind of had a name. And this was pretty much like a few developers that were feeling like a part of the same collective, which was just a name actually. Uh, like, you know, at a birthday party, they like designed this game which is uh, very physical, and I will also play it rather than explaining it. I think this is also my last video. But you will kind of see why it relates a little bit to this game. Hey! Hey! Yeah, it's down. It's down. I'm fine. <laughs> down. Okay. 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 One, two, <laughs> three, four, five. five. No, five, 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 slow up, 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 took the whole physical part here to the max, I think, but, <laughs> but uh, so you can see, like, uh, of course, because of the, this team of people, like, again, uh, talking about themselves as a Copenhagen game collective, then they actually attracted all these people around in the community that heard about this, and, oh, there's some people in Copenhagen doing this, and I really like, you know, the approach, and then they would, like, come and join kind of a project, or, like, just uh, hang around and volunteer and do, do stuff whenever we were, like, I don't know, organizing things. But then um, the interesting part is that after, it took us like maybe two years even, like before we actually realized like, maybe a year or two years where we realized what about having a website? Like what about putting all the projects in one place? And it's, uh, as I say, it took us some time, but we got there and we formed. And then it also felt a bit like, oh, now we are related to something. It's out in, in, the, in the internet and it's like one page that presents all the projects. So that was like really fun, but as I say, it was just, it still it was a process of what this website is, and it took you know, more months to define that. What about having like, you know, some idea of what are we? Like, who are we? Why would we want to do this? And, um, and then there was like, you know, you sit down in a meeting and it's like, okay, let's have an about page and try to actually define what do we want to do? Like, I mean, we're doing this in free time, but there's a reason why we want to do this. We believe in something. So we had like kind of this, Three, um, even today we kind of keep to these these three mission statements, uh, which is like we want to kind of promote and inspire like experimental game development in the, in the region because there's like a lot of talent, not only game developers, but artists or like 
you know, people that are interested in interactive works or, or games. So we kind of wanted to be part of that culture, or actually at that time, like kind of create that culture. Um, and then um, uh, we also had this kind of vision like, oh, wow, uh, there's so many great game designers in Sweden, Norway, Finland, like all around us. Like, and we have this in common conference, like Nordic game, but we don't actually know each other. Like we don't really talk to each other. We don't go to this conference even. Like, so there was like, what, how about you know, uniting a little bit more? Um, we didn't have like any ideas how that would happen, but we had it in our head about like let's let's talk to each other, right? Um, and then we were like, uh, how about also presenting all these experimental and indie games to the locals? Like we are in Copenhagen, and you know, uh, in Denmark, it's not indie games at, at the time, especially were not really popular, and it was not like you, you can't survive, especially like a Danish game developer selling your game in Denmark. It's like, yeah, maybe maybe 100 people will buy it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we were like, let's try to show, you know, the local community. There's a lot of interesting people in the local community that maybe don't know about this. So, so that was another another statement we had. So, yeah, this is a little bit of bad, bad slides, but yeah. So su suddenly we were like going deeper into actually organizing the team. And then we have like these core members that want to stand and like talk about the collective out. And we have like a little bit of more structure since 2012. We are like a non-profit organization, you know. So things from 2008 to, 2000, to today has been like just more evolving. And again, it, it's, it didn't become an institution, but at least it's a bit more organized space and, you know, people are understanding when they join, like, what is this? <laughs> so, um, so today, you know, we have this blog where we, like, promote, uh, mostly, like, because we do a lot of events, and I'll just say in a moment, but, like, now the website is also more, like, okay, we have, we have like, things to talk about, and there's, like, blog about, uh, people can write about their ideas, like, is that is game design related, or certain statements to relevant topic in the moment on, that are like you know, popular on the internet, like the feminist kind of discussion or like women in games and sexual harassment and stuff. So there's like people like expressing themselves on the blog, talking in the, like from their own perspective, but like being associated, associated to, uh, to the collective. So um, this, uh, over the years, like this mission, mission statement inspired like certain uh, like events and it's similar like to a maze, you know, like, or uh, just a lot of different events, like from game exhibitions and parties to game events, talks, showcases. Uh, then we have like, uh, yeah, we do a lot of game jams. Um, I don't know, and like we try to be like active on Facebook, Twitter and blogging. And as I say, like, I will tell you like, a couple of the events and I I'm hope like, I mean, I hope to inspire some of you to maybe do like a collaboration with people like us or like start something together because like a maze is a very good example of, of, of like a like a conference but this is also like very European or, or even big, bigger like international which is really awesome but I think there is space for a lot of like local events as well um, so for example this is also a collective game the Monkey <laughs> Monkey but uh, what we started doing at some point after, like we were like, okay, we're a bunch of people, we make games, uh, that's that's clear. But uh, how can we do more to like satisfy our like mission statements that we have like at that time not really written, but like you know, like in our heads. So we actually tried to do collaborations. For example, we did the one with Kill Screen at GDC. We made a party. We kickstarted the party. Actually, we just put it up and asked people to buy tickets or donate money and uh, we raised the money and we managed to do a game exhibition in San Francisco like 2011 with Kill Screen where we actually brought like Nordic or Scandinavian games uh, like kind of party games to to like uh, I don't think it was public works but it's like it's very much like the Wild Rumpus if people know the Wild Rumpus party at GDC so it was like a smaller version maybe from that uh, back in 2011 so we were Kind of, I think we also inspire a lot of the people in Valorant to actually do something even even bigger and cooler. So, um, so yeah. So this was, and the the idea was like, yeah, let's show that we have like some cool Scandinavian developers that make like some fun party or whatever <coughs> multiplayer games. Um, 
And that uh, was like one example. Another example, this is a yearly event that uh, started, um, I think it's like a fifth year this year, actually. It's uh, the Nordic Indie Game Night, and it's part of the Nordic Game Conference. And it's very similar to a maze, except that it takes like one, one day, like in, it's like very short, like two hours talks kind of lineup, but it's more about the finalist games and they are Nordic like indie games. And it's it's also meant as like, okay, we have like amazing developers here, let's kind of try to push them out, like talk about them and, and show to the world that these, these games exist. Because not everybody is very good, we know that like indie being as an indie developer could not doesn't necessarily mean you're good at PR and talking about your games. So you know, or like, yeah, let's let's kind of try to do something for each other in a way, cross promote each other. So this event has grown like from I don't know seventy people to today we are like over five hundred people like at the at the indie night, and it's a free event. That's also one of the cool things that uh, we managed to do having a partner like like a big conference like Nordic Game, is that we're trying to, to give them content. So and in return we want to do a free event where everybody can can come and you know enjoy it for for a night for free and then the same games are also like uh, out uh, in the expo area the conference the next two days but that's like more for the conference people and there's like a indie sensation prize like <laughs> so it is a bit uh, uh, kind of a smaller event than a maze in a way but uh, amount of people that come to it I guess because it's free it's like it's it's really over 500 and I don't even know how many <laughs> um, so what, um, another thing is that we've been trying to focus on local events to, as I said, like push like content to people in the area. I think we think it's very important because it's also like kind of a lobby. Um, if you want to get like the, com like the community around like the city to support you or something like that, this is very important, like doing these local events. And you know, more like it kind of gives, over time, gives access to funding for doing more events. So it's, we see every single small event we do as kind of lobby, especially the local ones, because it's not about really PR and you know, telling the world we have this cool stuff going on, but it's more on a local level, like lobbying kind of to the politicians and people that have like <laughs> access to money. Um, so one of those events is like this, we've been doing like game exhibitions, we did arcade boat, we had like uh, games on a boat in Copenhagen, um, and then we also had like part of like a huge festival. Uh, this is like a distortion festival. It's like a really big street festival in Copenhagen, and every like young people, all of them are outside like partying for three days or four days. And we've been like part of that as well, just kind of to you know, show like again we are here, we're doing this, and it worked out. I mean, worked out pretty well. Like actually, people start to learn there is this collective that like makes cool games or shows cool games in Copenhagen. Um, yeah, you know, like journalists have started contacting us and we've been on like printed like national magazines and stuff. And that is again, it's lobby. Uh, you should really see it as a, there is like a someone at home and reading this, that's like an older person, probably more influential than us because we don't have access to money and power. <laughs> so, uh, and the last thing I want to tell you about is like all these events ha kind of has, of course, uh, yeah, uh, created chain of chain of festivals and events. But then the latest one that we are kind of focusing on as well is a outdoor street festival, like a Copenhagen play festival called Wood, and it takes place in May. And that's actually our own kind of thing, like a two, three day, like a weekend festival uh, for all kinds of physical outdoor games to I don't know cyber games to I don't know. This year we have like water games and like depends on the locations we kind of like try to curate or do open calls for different type of games and again uh, the whole idea is like somehow from the first games i showed you we really like went in the direction of a lot of like physical games and physical play and i really think it has something to do with uh, again the history so uh, i think every area or whatever has their own like thing, and this is what Copenhagen apparently, <laughs> or what we initiated and what turned out to be. So, yeah, this is like I have two pictures. Of <laughs> it's like a really fun, weird little festival that we love. <laughs> but um, I kind of that's all pretty much what I prepared. 
there is a lot, a lot of stuff happening and I'm welcoming you to check out the website and uh, to see what we're up to and we have a lot of open calls, you can always participate in different events we're doing but I'm really hoping to see more, more things happening around Europe. Uh, so that was why I'm here and telling you this. So you're welcome to contact me, I have my Twitter and email there. Uh, so. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>